friends, welcome to our session today that is containing some core work and then some basic yoga poses and then we'll see how it feels to balance on our hands, our arms into a handstand towards the end of the class. So um, middle end of the class and then we'll take ourselves back down again. So I'm so happy that you're here with me and bring a block into your practice. If you have one, if not, maybe a pillow would work just as fine. Something to have behind the head when we um, start our journey into the core. So let's come all the way down onto our backs, please. And then from there, taking the head onto the block so that we can relax into the upper back and focus in towards the core and pulling the belly button all the way in. So awareness to the belly button, lower back in towards the mat, hands next to the hips, feet flat, and then reach the arms up and over and exhale, taking it all the way back down, starting our journey into the core, into the lower abs, to the middle and to the upper, all the way from the seat up towards the sternum. So we'll reach our arms all the way forward and taking them up and over and staying nice and plugged in into the center and exhale. And then we'll take it all the way up and over and exhale, bringing it back down and inhale one more time, emptying out the air in the belly and exhale, lengthening all the way and getting into that front side of the spine. Now from here, we're just gonna roll up the head from the block if it's possible and we're going to pump our arms um, for the hundreds right here and awareness to the belly button plugging that abdominal wall in strength into the deeper layers we're just going to pump our arms for five down and then we'll pump them for five up and we're already up to ten and then we pump for five down and we keep the knees nice and even and we'll pump for five up and we'll keep the lower back plugged into the mat and pump five down and pump for five up and pump for five down and we keep on going and we stay as still as we can into the core and keep that belly working for us keep the core working for us five four three two one and five four three, two, one. We are up to 70 already. We're almost there. And then bring the hands facing down and we are up to 80 and we have 20 more pumping with the arms left. And five, four, three, two, one, 10 more. And then we're done with our hundreds. And then five, four, three, two, one. And taking everything back down. Take the block into the hands, please and take the arms up and over and see if we can at the same time lengthen the arms and pull the belly button in and keep the ribs knitted together and then reach the arms up towards the sky look up between the knees and then we're going to roll our way up and take the arms up to the sky now with the legs we might move them a little bit forward a little bit back whichever works the best for you and then we roll it back down so we can rely on our core and help our core to support us. Inhale, exhale, rolling up, vertebrae by vertebrae, taking it all the way up, arms by the ears, lengthening the spine, and arms forward. All this while we are plugging the intercostal layers in, the spaces between the ribs, the muscles between the ribs, arms up, and rolling all the way back up, and stretching the arms forward and up, and then forward and rolling back down and we'll just have a kind of fun time right here inhale and exhale and bringing it up we'll do two more rolling vertebrae by vertebrae inhale lengthening staying connected upper and lower body arms forward roll down vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae and then from here take the block between the knees you might move your legs in a little bit so that the feet are flat, we have chest lifts coming up, hands behind the head, elbows out to the side. And before we head on up and down with the chest, let's just do a little plug in, check in to see that we have our belly button awareness with us. It really is the upward flowing movement in the yoga, in the yoga world, Uriyana Bandha lifting it up. 
and plugging all our belongings to the front side of the spine. Let's exhale and inhale, juicing our abdominals, exhale up, inhale, lengthen, and exhale up, and inhale, lengthen, and exhale up, and inhale, lengthen. We can squeeze into that block, lengthening away, exhale, and inhale on the way down. And we'll do our best to keep the lower back the awareness of the belly button plugged in. The lower back can stay in the mat. Maybe that works really well for us. Inhale and exhale, all to find the connection for the upper and the lower back. Exhale up, inhale down. And exhale up and 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 inhale down. We'll do one more right here. And then we hold it up and pulse it and pulse and pulse. We'll pulse for 10 here. For eight more, squeeze the block. Six more and four more and two more. And last one, bring it all the way back down. Take your block behind the head again for support. Support for the neck, support for the nervous system, support for the entire upper body, the chest area and the shoulders. Bring the right leg up to the sky. We'll give ourselves a leg stretch right here. Maybe we'll stretch the left leg forward. And we'll stay here for a few breaths. And then gently bending the right knee and switching taking the left leg up, hands around the hamstrings, right leg can stay bent for a moment. And then from there, we'll take that right leg forward. Nice. And then bring both legs down and bend your knees and we'll lift them up together and take the legs up to the sky. Now we might take the hands underneath and having the thumbs kind of touching right at the tip of the tailbone and that way we get that help of lifting and coiling into the core. We'll start by flexing and pointing the ankles here, the feet. Get some good opening pathways all the way up to the toes. Yeah, we'll do this. Another like four more here. And last one. And then we can separate the feet and circle the ankles. And circle them the other way around. And the other way around. And then we'll take the feet all the way together. You can flex and point your toes at the same time, pointing, spreading the toes. Leg drops, right leg down, and bring it back up, and left leg down, and bring it back up. And we are simply activating those lower abs and standing strong leg poses and kicking legs up into the air. So see if you can extend all the way from the adductors to the inner knees, to the inner ankles, keeping the hips and the shoulders um, organized like on top and below each other, like a nice rectangle. We'll do another four here, and another three, and another two, and one more. And then we'll take it up and then we'll scissor the legs and let it go maybe a little bit faster. Lower back stays into the mat, getting some good fire going into the belly. We'll do another eight and seven here and six and five and four more and three more. And last one, bring it all the way, knees to the chest. We have one more abdominal exercise that we'll do, or core work. Um, right and left side, alternate leg and arm. So let's bring the lower back into the mat, awareness to the belly button right below it, arms up to the sky, tabletop legs, opposite arm, opposite leg, extends away from the midline, we bring it back up, opposite arm, opposite leg, extending it, and switching. 
it's like the arm and the leg is being gently pulled away from the midline and just really clearing the lines of communication into the core. Inhale and exhale. We'll do another eight here. And seven. And six. And five more. And four more. And three more. Lower back stays in the mat. The core is working hard. One more. Let's do one more. Each, each side. And then from there, take the knees into the chest. Feet down. We'll do a little glute activation before we come on over to our standing poses. We can take the block away for now. And we're just going to lay nice and flat onto the back, pulling the belly button all the way in. And then... From here, um, hands next to the hips, and then we're gonna roll up and activate the glutes and the lower abs. And rolling back down, vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae, and bringing it all the way back up, activating the glutes, the buttocks, the rotators, the lower abs, and rolling back down, vertebrae by vertebrae, and again, rolling it all the way up, and exhale, rolling it back down. And bringing it all the way up, squeezing into the glutes, activating the deeper layers, just hugging it all the way in, skin to muscle, muscle to bone. We'll do two more here. And then exhale, rolling down vertebrae by vertebrae. And then we roll it back up and hold it up here and do like a little extra activation by pulsing up like the good old pulsing lower abs and buttocks and finding the four corners of the feet. We can stay here and we can add on the arms up to the sky and get a little bit more into the spaces between the ribs. We can reach the arms up and we pulse another eight here. Yeah, so we can rely on the back body to support us. And so we can rely on the front body to support us, but really this is this is for our glutes and our lower abs, like the major support system in standing poses. And then gently from there, rolling it back down, vertebrae by vertebrae by vertebrae, and taking the knees into the chest and make circles on the sacrum this way and that way, and then bringing it around the other way around. Inhale and exhale. And then hands underneath the knees and rolling it up, coming into your downward facing dog piece. So we'll take down dog, spreading the fingers nice and wide and pedaling into the right heel and to the left heel. And having a nice time right here, stretching into the right side, the left side, inhale, exhale. Come to tabletop, second finger forward, knuckle number one is down, arch the spine up to the sky, biceps are facing each other, top of the head is towards the mat, and inhale, lengthen out through the side body, and exhale, press the knuckles, the knees, the toes down, and most of all, awareness to the belly button, arch the spine, and inhale, bring it all the way back up. And exhale, we'll do one more, bringing the rib cage in, belly button in. And exhale, taking it into neutral space. Give ourselves a couple of shoulder push ups. Just some nice, easy going shoulder push ups and loosening up anything that we might have stagnated into the shoulders. We'll do another three here. Inhale, exhale, getting some good fluidity and movement into shoulder area. And then from here, we pull out the upper arm bones in, but bring the ribs in. And then from there, we come back to downward facing dog, press the palms, lift the upper arm bones. And walking the feet over to the hands and inhale, long spine. 
Exhale, fold, feet can be hip widths apart, bend into your knees, raise your sacrum higher than your lower back, take your hands to your hips, elbows to the sky, root the feet, and come up to standing and release the hands. And let's just check our balance right here. Take the arms up to the sky, sweeping them all the way up, tailbone down, belly button is lifting in, and then we'll see how it feels to come up onto the toes here, and checking our midline. Sipping from pubic bone to belly button to sternum, all the way in. We'll just see how that feels for now. It feels like we have it together collectively in the future, right now. And then exhale, take it back down. And hands together, bend your knees, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step back to plank pose, please. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. I know this is basic yoga, so we can always take the knees down to the mat and have the shoulders and the wrists stacked. Now, while you hold your plank here, I'm just gonna come over and just give us a little um, check with the hands. So the knuckle number one, two, three, four, and thumb, index, long, ring, and pinky finger, they are all down. They're way down onto the mat. So there's a little vacuum suck into the center of the palm. And that is our whoosh, like prana clawing down, bringing it back up kind of feeling the whole time. So let's keep that for our hand placement down onto the mat. Inhale and exhale. We'll stay right there and hold our plank. If you held your plank for this whole time, maybe take a child's pose in between and then come back up. Tuck the toes under and um, hug the biceps together and come up high onto your toes and practice the um, knuckle number one down and the fingertips down. It's like spider hands. It's like sunshine hands, rays of sunshine fingers. We'll stay here for another three breaths and build our plank. Seems like a pretty basic pose, but it takes a lot of components. Just take that heel of the hand pressure off and take the pressure more into the core. One more breath, and then exhale. Downward facing dog, Adho Svanasana. Step your right foot between your hands, left knee down onto the mat. Inhale, arms forward and up. Quad stretch, hip flexor stretch. Taking the gaze up to the sky, side body long. Exhale, release, hands to the mat. Step back, downward facing dog. Left foot between the hands. Take your right knee down, inhale. Sweep the arms forward and up. Quad hip flexor stretch on the right side, tailbone down, belly button awareness. And you'll feel that quad stretching even a little bit more. Exhale, take it back down, step it back, downward facing dog. Step your right foot between the hands. This time come to high crescent lunge, squeeze your glutes, the whole hip support system that we worked on. Take the arms up to the sky, high crescent lunge. Squeeze from the outer layers to the inner layers and hold that and then from there extend out organically. The gaze can be forward and then exhale, release hands to the mat. Step it back, downward facing dog. Take your left foot between your hands, high crescent lunge. Take your arms up to the sky, bicep to ears. The gaze can be forward, squeeze your support system, all of the large muscles, and then all of the small muscles will respond and come along for the squeezing. Exhale, release, hands to the floor. We have one more lunge right here. Down dog, and then right foot between the hands. Left knee down to the mat. This time around, come forward in the hips and take your arms forward. Pull the upper arm bones in, take your biceps to your ears, and come forward in the hips for a different quad stretch. At the same time, pull that right heel towards the right sit bone. Maybe take the gaze up and exhale, release hands to the mat. Step it back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step your left foot between the hands, take your right knee down to the mat. Anjayasana, take your arms forward, pull the upper arm bones in, just to really set the foundation from where we want to move with our shoulders and our upper arms and really the whole rotation of the arm. Take the gaze up and forward, Anjasana, low lunge, quad, hip flexor, belly. Exhale, release, hands to the mat, step it back, 
Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Come up to your toes, bend your knees. Take a step over to the hands, inhale, long spine. You can bend into the knees. Exhale, fold. Take your hands to your hips, elbows to sky. Come all the way back up to standing. Release the hands. Let's take the feet all the way together and reach the arms up to the sky. Squeeze your glutes and your lower abs. And then from there, come up onto your toes and see if you can keep the feet together. Like a standing handstand, but it really is a toe stand. It can be anything we want it to be. We'll just stay here until we feel like we as a group, as a class, is connecting with each other and with the balance of standing on our toes. Power energy is, is pretty big. Exhale, take the heels back down and hinge and fold. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step to downward facing dog pose. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Spread the toes. Gonna make our way over onto the belly. So plank pose, take your knees down and come all the way down onto your belly for some posterior work for the back to stay strong as we are about to start a journey on the wall to kick up. For now, take your feet hip widths apart, spread your toes and take your shoulder blades off um, the mat, the top front of the shoulders off and then bring your shoulder blades together on the back and then from there, we're gonna lift up <laughs> and we might get some kisses and then we just lift it all the way up and stretch in towards the posterior whole back body, making it nice and strong. And exhale, taking it back down, take a little pause, wiggle your hips. We'll do one more here. Lift the shoulder blades up and away, lift your chest, lift your legs, lift your hands, back body strong. Just a nice, easy, whole back body posterior strengthening hold, Shalambhasana. Exhale, bring it back down. And then from here, take your feet together. Take your right arm out for shoulder stretch. Come over onto your right side, stack your feet together. So we have those kind of stricter legs of having the right and the left foot stacked above and below each other or simply next to each other. One more breath. And then gently come to the second side, left arm out and come over for a left side body, supine um, lying version of shoulder stretch onto the left side. Feet together, if it's possible. You might have to pull that top hip out a little bit longer and make it a little bit longer so it feels like it's covering up and, and, um, and keeping up with the bottom leg. One more breath and exhale, bring it all the way back to the belly, hands by the shoulders, hands interlace behind us, roll the shoulder blades up and back, lift the chest, take your arms up and lift up into Shalambhasana with your hands interlaced behind you or hands onto the sacrum. The feet can stay down, the feet can lift up. We are lifting from the belly and making the whole front and back body strong here. One more breath and then exhale taking it all the way back down, hands by the shoulders, push back, tabletop, push back, child's pose, big toes together, knees apart. One more breath here, and then gently come all the way up to tabletop, tuck the toes, and downward facing dog pose, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Give yourself a couple of nice deep breaths right here. Come up onto the toes, bend the knees, look between the hands, bend the knees nice and deep. And you can either take a step or a hop over to the hands. Inhale, long spine and exhale, fold. Hands to hips, elbows to sky, root your feet. Come all the way up to standing and release the hands. Inhale, one more arms up to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana, hands above the head. And then from here, squeeze everything together and see how it feels to come up on the toes here. 
see if we can connect with each other again and kind of ride each other's energy wave of coming up into to a toe rise here. Exhale, bring it back down, hinge and fold. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step your left foot back. Parsvottanasana, pyramid pose. This is where we could absolutely have our blocks on each side of the right foot and get that extra support of length for the arms, for the side body. And we keep our right hip back, our left hip forward. Inhale, long spine and exhale, hinge and fold, forward fold. Few breaths right here. Leave your left hand down, take your right hand to the hip and pull that right hip back and then take the right arm up to the sky. Open, twisted triangle pose. Opening pathways, upper lower body, checking the spine and exhale, take it back down. Step it forward and step your right foot back, please. And come to pyramid pose on your second side. Long spine, exhale, fold. Left hip back, right hip forward. So here we are with that abdominal awareness again, hinging and folding forward. Few breaths right here. Right hand onto the right block and the left hand comes to the sacrum, Parvata Trikonasana, open revolve triangle today. Right hand down, left arm up, awareness to the belly button. Inhale and exhale, and then we'll take it all the way back down and step forward, please. Take the blocks to the side, take your feet hip widths apart, and take the hands underneath the feet, please. So we'll take the left and the right palm underneath our feet and give the heel of the hand a little bit of a massage, a little bit of a um, counter stretch from down dogs and the legs. Top of the head towards the mat, elbows out to the side. And gently bring it all the way back down. Hands to hips, elbows to sky, root your feet and come up to standing and release the hands. And then from there, I'm gonna turn my mat over to the wall and I hope you'll do the same. And we'll do some leg stretches on the wall and then we'll do some kicking up. So um, turning the mat, around and kind of securing the objects on the wall. I think we're doing good. I hope you are at home too. Make sure it's a safe stand for the wall for you. And then from there, take your feet against the wall. And then from here, let's come down onto the knees and come back to our shoulder push-ups or our shoulder flossing. Upper arm bones in, knit the front side together, exhale, protrude the back, and then we'll do just a few more of these to kind of really settle into the upper arm bone into the shoulder support system. So here we are, um, upper arm bones in, but do your abdominal curl at the same time. And then from there, we'll come back up into our feet, are up on the ledge on the wall or up on your wall, and then take your right foot up for a uh, Ekapada Prasarita Padottanasana is a one leg feet wide apart stretch. Here we are stretching the front and the back of the leg and then exhale, take it back down, switch sides, hug your biceps and your triceps, inhale and exhale, and then come back down and take a little pause, come down onto your knees, shake your hands out in between if you needed to, or you might take a plank, but you have permission to, to shake your hands out and then we'll take the hands down on the mat, back to our down dog with feet up on the ledge on the wall. Lift the upper arm bones, pull the belly in, and then we'll step it up with one leg up to 90 degrees and the second leg up to 90 degrees. And we'll take those feet together, just like when we were standing in our Tadasana and onto our toes. Now, we have to hold on here. We have to have suction cups on the feet. We've got to pull the belly button in. We'll take the right leg up into a um, L shape right here, hug the midline, much like the leg drops and the leg extensions we did in the beginning. 
with the core. It comes in right here. Switch sides, left leg up, L shape. It doesn't even go over the midline, it goes straight up. Gaze is down between the hands. Exhale, take it back down and walk down. Feet on the ledge, step your feet forward. Take Uttanasana, ragdoll hands around the elbows and give us a nice forward fold, relaxing, letting the sacrum lift be a little higher than the lower back. Inhale and exhale. A few breaths right here. And gently release and step back to downward facing dog and then step your um, one foot, the foot that will keep you still having your class towards me. Step one foot forward. So we have the other foot, the pinky toe side against the wall, pressing against the wall. And the other foot is wide apart. So we have the wingspan with our arms and our, um, and our ankles. We can always check that. Take the hands forward. We'll take the hands forward and extend the side body long. Bend into the knees and raise the sacrum a little higher than the lower back and lengthen the space from the waist to the shoulders and knit the ribs together. And then from there, after we created that long side body, shoulders and wrists are stacked. Inhale, long spine and exhale, extend all the way up to the sky. So we'll give ourselves a few cat cows here. Inhale, extend out, fire up the back of the legs, fire up the core and inhale. Take it all the way back out and exhale, arch the spine, just nice basic spinal waves right here, which I'm hoping that you feel all the way in towards the back body, clearing any knots and just taking it nice and smooth through the whole ride. Exhale and then slowly come to tabletop. Take your hands towards the wall, please. I'm just going to chug my mat in just a little bit more and then here we are with um, hands like an inch away, um, how about a hand length away from the wall and downward facing dog. And then from here, step your favorite, most volunteer leg in and take your shoulders over your wrist, plug the upper arm bones in, knit the ribs together and keep your hips over your shoulders as you lift up into your Adhamukha Vrikshasana, your handstand and knit the ribs together. And we'll build some strength here, knuckles down, fingertips down, and then we'll come down the same way we came up and come back to downward facing dog. And then we'll do it with our least dominant side, the leg that we have to like ask it to please step in. And then we'll plug the upper arm bones in, knit the ribs together, and then we'll see how it feels to kick up on this side, taking your least dominant leg and asking it to take you up using that lower abs, the core, using the intercostal layers, squeezing the glutes. It's like we're standing on those toes. And then exhale, come back down the same way that you came up. And then come to child's pose, big toes together, knees apart to give yourself a little pause right here. Few more breaths right here just kind of relaxing slightly before we move on to uh, seeing how it feels to maybe pull the legs off of the wall so downward facing dog Adhamukha Svanasana turn yourself in towards the wall again unless of course you're practicing your handstand off the wall and in the middle of the room I will go towards the wall and then from here I have my hands about a hand length away from the wall shoulders over wrist using my volunteer leg and coming up and taking both feet towards the wall use the core claw the fingertips and see if both feet can come off the wall at the same time squeezing everything clawing the fingertips coming down the way we came up and then we'll do the second side and Second side meaning kicking up with a non-volunteering leg. We have to kind of tell it to take us up. So we'll see how that goes. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. 
Knit the ribs together, use your core, squeeze your glutes, your lower abs, keep your arms straight, squeeze triceps and biceps, feet together, and from there, see how it feels to maybe get both feet off at the same time. And make your way down, maybe you're still standing up there. Yeah, take it to where it feels the best. Take yourself down when you're ready and meet me with your hands onto your, above your knees. And we'll just take a little release right here. Release for shoulders, release for the neck. And then we'll take the hands, thumbs facing in onto the knees and hands facing out. And then we'll arch the spine up to the sky and bring it back down. And we're gonna use that a little bit more and seeing if we can kick up towards the wall and catch ourselves before the wall catches up catches us so kind of with this movement right here and then inhale long spine and exhale pull the belly button in and let's do one more time exhale bringing it all the way in and exhale extending out and then we'll come and face the wall again and see how it feels to kick up to the wall and checking to see if we can catch yourself before the wall catches us. Here we go. Inhale, exhale. It isn't a, it's just an extension of down dog, but it sure becomes different, right? So here we go. We also get like a nice reminder of how much muscles that we can call upon in our downward facing dog. Shoulders over wrists. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the midline. Maybe you do with your dominant leg and then maybe we'll take a round on the least dominant leg and then we'll call off our handstand practice for today. Second side, least dominant leg. The one leg that's like doesn't really volunteer to step in. We'll do that side. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. Knuckles are down, fingertips are down. Catch yourself before the wall catches you with the support system of the glutes and the lower abs. And slowly coming back to your mat, taking child's pose big toes together, knees apart, and we give ourselves a nice little rest right here, and extending the arms forward. And gently coming up onto all fours. Take your hands around the yoga mat, scrunch it up, come to tiger dog or frog dog, whichever we like to call it. Bend the knees, take the knees to the shoulders, stretch the arms forward, take the gaze between the hands and dig into that upper back and then take your heels towards the floor. Straighten the arms and exhale, come down onto your knees. Take a block, please. The Either the flatter way or maybe like the second level up. The upper back is fairly warmed up after our handstand practice. So let's um, see how it feels to come into a supportive back bend. Flat block or medium block, you choose. Take the block right below the shoulder blade tips so it's not on the shoulder blades, it's right below it. Take the hands maybe even behind the head so your shoulder blade tips can squeeze in to the, to the block and then we can lift the, we can lift up and over and release into the upper back and take advantage of the of the handstand practice that does create a lot of heat for the upper body 
few breaths right here. Inhale, exhale. And slowly coming all the way back up. Hands by the legs for support to make your way back up to your seat to come all the way down onto our backs. We can roll down vertebrae by vertebrae or just simply coming down. Bring the knees into the chest, please. Take your right knee in and your left leg forward. And extending, lengthening and switching sides. Take your left leg in, extending your right leg forward. We have a supported back bend coming up. And if you are eager, we have full Urdhva Dhanurasana as well. It sometimes feels pretty good after handstands if we felt like the shoulders are okay to push up with both hands. For now, knees to chest, sacrum down, happy baby pose, arms inside the legs, hands outside the feet, shoulders towards the uh, knees towards the shoulders because we don't certainly want to pull the shoulders up. We'll keep them down and roll them side to side. Check and see how your sacrum is. And then gently bring your knees in and take your block, either flat way, medium way, the taller way underneath your sacrum. So move your legs in, come up onto your uh, toes. And then from there, you can take your block underneath your sacrum plate the triangle bony part at the base of the sacrum. Palms can face up, palms can take the sides of the mat. If we feel like we're into that center of the mat, sometimes we have to adjust a little bit so the arms feels evenly distributed. Hip flexor stretch, lower belly stretch. Making sure that there's nothing holding us back in the belly, that after that, there's a lot of abs kicking up into handstand. We just make sure that we get a good full stretch into that. And then from here, you can certainly stay right here and enjoy, or you can take the block away, coming back up on your toes, taking your feet, your seat and your feet down, hands by the shoulders, pressing your hands down, pressing your feet down, second fingers pointing straight back, the basic back bend either on the block or on hands and feet. Pull the belly button in and then take it all the way up to the top of the head, come up onto your toes and maybe walk your hands in and we'll come into one Urdhva Dhanurasana. Inhale and exhale. We'll stay for a few breaths right here and enjoy our back bend together and exhale, coiling the chin in, rolling all the way back down, taking your feet flat, hands at the base of the femurs, and gently pressing the femurs away from the hips, just like a gentle press, pressure onto the legs to have the sacrum flat down, and the lower back lifts into its natural curve. And a few breaths right here. Arms out to the side, feet wide as your yoga mat. And then we can take the knees all the way together. So we're knocking our knees together. And then from there, take your left leg down to the outside of the mat and your right knee tips in. And we'll come to a hip flexor, twisty, stretch into iliacus, iliopsoas quad and the organs, the right side of the belly. You can stay here with your left ankle. Some of you will take the left ankle over the right knee and put a little gentle pressure onto that right leg for a different feeling into your twist. And we'll use the left leg if you had it crossed and then take it back up and we'll start with our uh, knees knocking together and then from the knees together take your right leg out to the right side and your left knee down to the mat. Twist the journey. Maybe your right leg stays where it is. Maybe your right ankle comes over your 
left knee. And enjoying our gentle twist. And slowly taking it back down and come with your feet flat. Take your knees into the chest. And hands under the knees, either roll to the side or come to upright, rolling up, coming to a block, or maybe maybe you're sitting on a blanket or something that feels comfortable. And then from here, we're just gonna take a few moments to sit together with our hands onto our lap. Maybe the hands are separated and facing up for like a nice exchange of energy to the palms of the hands. See where your shoulders feel supported. You can pull the upper arm bones in slightly and then pull the ears back. And we'll take a few moments to sit nice and tall on the sit bones, tall spine, ears back. Yeah, take a few more breaths right here, three more breaths. And then gently we'll bring our palms together and join our voices for Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. The text is coming below here and it is a beautiful chant that offers out peace to all beings everywhere and peace to our mind, peace to our heart and peace to our body. So let's uh, take our tone together if you like to join me. We'll take a comfortable inhale. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 Thank you so much everyone for joining me for this core basic yoga and handstand practice. We build ourselves up from standing onto our feet, nice and tall and balancing into opening up the legs a little bit and mastering our plank pose, which is like the beginning to a handstand. And then we get to stretch our legs a little bit on the wall to come into our Adho Mukha Vrikshasana, our downward turning tree, which is rooting down, rising up from our hands. If you enjoy this class, uh, please subscribe to my channel, help me grow my channel and share with your friends. If there's anyone out there that you think would enjoy this class, feel free to share it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next practice. Thank you very much. And let's all take a Shavasana because that was a lot of um, hard work, even though it was basic yoga, but it was still a lot of hard work. Let's take Shavasana. We'll take Shavasana back. Yes. Thank you for coming. And we just let all of the body relax. Maybe when you sing chants, your animals come running too. So, namaste from me and Badger. Hope you have a wonderful day.